Hello, hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Good afternoon if you're watching the replay or good evening if you're watching the replay, all right? I hope you all are having a wonderful week thus far. This is a wonderful Wednesday and I am so excited about the word that we're gonna get into today, okay? Uh, we're coming from 2 Samuel chapter 21. And we're going to start at verse one, okay? Um, if you haven't had a chance, haven't had a chance to um, subscribe to my channel, I wish that you would do that. Subscribe to the channel, um, share it, like it, comment. Make sure you put comments on, um, you know, if you have any questions or just anything that God releases to you in the middle of this, okay? As we go through this study, we're, right now we're this is part of a series called it's not your fault okay it's going to be well i don't want to say the number of series because we're just gonna we're gonna exhaust the text we're gonna pull out piece by piece by piece okay and so let's get into that let me get something to drink first yes i hope y'all got joy but um yeah, so that's it. That. Second Samuel 21 and verse 1. All right. There was a three-year famine in the days of David, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. The Lord replied, It is on account of Saul and his bloody house where he put to death the Gibeonites. Now we're talking about it's, it's not your fault. But uh, we need to dissect this part first. Um, so there was a three year famine. During that time, famines um, consist of, I'm pretty sure you can imagine what a famine is. But a famine is the crops aren't growing, there's no water, no rain. Um, you know, and people are starving, basically. And they're not just starving, but they're starving to death um, because of the lack of resources. So a famine had, you know, massive declines of resources. Uh, we think we're kind of experiencing a sense of a famine, but no, we haven't made it to the famine stage just yet as it relates to what happened in the Bible. Now, there, I know that there are some shortages of food going on right now, but with a three-year famine in the Bible days, there it sometimes it would get so bad to where, I don't want to be graphic, but they would begin to eat children. You know, there's a story in the Bible, maybe we'll discuss that. There's a story in the Bible to where two mothers fought over whose son that they were going to eat first. Um, so... That's how bad this these famines can get in the Bible days. Okay, just to give you a little picture. So there was a famine in the land, and David, being the man of God that he is, you know, he um, he was a man after God's own heart, right? So him being the man of God that he is, he went to the Lord because he often sought God as a king. Um, so one thing we can learn from that is that no matter what position you're in, no matter how high your position is, it is of, a, it of importance for you to make sure that you seek the Lord anytime things are going sour or even when things are good. You know, David was a worshiper, so he worshiped God in the good and in the bad, okay? So um, make sure if you're in a position of leadership that you want to begin to seek the Lord if you have not already begun to. So David seeks God and says, God, what's going on? Why is there a famine? What happened? You know, usually in the Bible days, they considered for there to be, uh, when they were in moments of good times, moments where there was plenteous of rain, moments of when the crops were growing, the children were growing, they were having babies. They considered that to be, um, and I believe it to be true too, 
they considered it to be a moment of blessings from the Lord. Um, they believed it to be a time where God was favoring them. So David looks and he says, wait, where's the favor? What has happened? Why does it look like things are going sour? Why does it look like things are going bad? So David inquires after God. He, he, he seeks God. And God has an answer for him. Uh, and I thought that was so beautiful because the word of the Lord says that God hears the cries of the righteous. So David is considered to be a righteous man. Um, and so he sought after God and God answered the cry of the righteous. This righteous man, this man of valor, this man of wisdom, this man of prayer, this man of diligence and humility towards God, this beautiful man. So God answers him and God says, it is on account of Saul. God says, this is because Saul desired to kill, to put to death the Gibeonites. And I was like, man, so God shut a whole nation down. He shut a whole country down, a whole city down. He, he allowed a famine to happen because of the Gibeonites. I was like, well, who, who are the Gibeonites? Who are these people that God had so much, I guess, care for? God, God had so much of an attachment to these people to where he defended them in that way. Now, as you see, even though David was caught as collateral, in the midst of the collateral damage, he was caught in the midst of this, this situation because it really didn't have much to do with David. David wasn't the one who God had caused the famine because of, but it still happened. Hmm. Now, why did it happen? The famine happened on account of Saul, one man, who was also a king. Saul was a king as well, but he was not exactly a righteous king, uh, according to the Bible. As a matter of fact, Saul sought to kill David. Um, that's, that's a whole other story. Saul spent a lot of time trying to kill David. But he was unsuccessful. And even though David had the opportunity to kill Saul, he did not take advantage of it. <laughs> Interesting, huh? So, I love the Word of God. We're in, of course, if you're just tuning in, we're in 2 Samuel 21, verse 1. It is not your fault, series. So, the famine happened on account of Saul. And the King James Version says... <coughs> And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. So that brought me to another question in the midst of this, this study here. Um, who are the Gibeonites? Who are the Gibeonites? These people that God sought to defend, you know. So, the Gibeonites, they were the remnant of the Amorites, okay? Now, um, this remnant, the Gibeonites, they had this, they made peace with the children of Israel. Y'all know who the children of Israel were? The children of Israel were the us, the believers. They were considered to be as God's chosen people. And the Gibeonites, they were not Israelites, but they made peace with them. And they made peace with them in such a, such a way that they dwelled with them. They lived together in peace and in harmony in some instances. Now, these people who made peace with the people of God suffered because of Saul's hatred. 
Saul sought to kill them. Saul killed many of them. And as a result, God allowed a famine for three years that caused King David to have to say, God, what's going on? Why has this gotten this bad? I thought you, you were blessing us, but what happened? Our kingdom, our country, we were doing so good, God. But then all of a sudden this famine came. God, why? And so God gave the answer, and this answer was because of Saul killing these people who had made peace with his people. So in essence, people who make peace with God's people are God's people to him is what I believe this scripture is saying. So God defended the Gibeonites. It wasn't David's fault. This famine had absolutely nothing to do with the sins of David. This famine had absolutely nothing to do with the other people who were experiencing this famine. But the famine was to punish the house of Saul because of what he had done, because of the murders that he had committed. So these murders that were committed against the Gibeonites, in essence, in today's time, um, these were murders committed against the innocent. Because the Gibeonites did nothing to Saul. Nothing. But he sought to kill them anyway. So, God protected the innocent. As I'm going to say today, that God always protects the innocent. And no matter what anyone does or anyone thinks, um, you know, that may seem as though that they're getting ahead, that they're getting by, that they're not reaping the consequence of something that they've done to an innocent individual, not the case because God always protects, God always defends the innocent. He does it time after time after time after time in the Bible. As a matter of fact, we can do a study on that, God protecting the innocent. But nonetheless, uh, Saul, a king, was not above and beyond the judgment of God. So it doesn't matter what government thinks that they can do whatever they want to do. It doesn't matter what um, what priest, what preacher, what uh, business owner, what CEO, what politician, um, what uh, athlete, professional athlete, what anyone with a high standard or is in, who, no matter who is in authority, and no matter what position they think they have, they are not beyond the correction of God. They are not beyond the punishment and the judgment of God when they offend the innocent. When they seek to slay the innocent. They, that can be slaying a career. That can be slaying an actual person. You know, we, we're living in times where in America there's a lot of police brutality against innocent individuals who do not deserve to die. There is no such thing as God not protecting the innocent. Why? Because their death is not their fault. Excuse me. So God protects the innocent. He always protects the innocent. So these Gibeonites who had made peace with the Israelites, who had made peace with the children of God, found themselves being slaughtered without a defense, 
they couldn't defend themselves against Saul because Saul seemingly was too great for them. So they were in a situation that seemed to be too great for them. You know, it seemed as though there was nothing that they could do about it because this decree of death was from a king, someone who had greater power as so he thought, than the Gibeonites. But God defended them. And might I suggest to you, I want to encourage you for a moment, um, be encouraged. Those of you who are innocent, who have found yourselves in situations and circumstances that are beyond uh, your ability to fight, you may be trapped in... Um, in situations, relationships. Now, if you're in a relationship that's abusive, get out. But I know sometimes you feel as though that you cannot because you feel as though you're trapped. Seek the Lord. God can defend you. God is a defender of the innocent. But you got to believe that in your heart. Believe that God will defend you. God calls an entire famine. That means that nothing they did prospered, nothing they did worked, nothing they tried brought increase in their lives. There was a famine. So in today's time, when there is someone who has brought an offense, someone who has tried to slaughter or kill or murder, or, you know, and we're speaking about bring death in many different ways, you know, bring death either financially or bring death physically, bring death to character, bring death to someone else's integrity, all right? When that happened, that individual positions themselves for God to come in and say, okay, there's going to be a famine in your life. And if you're someone who has found yourself to be one of the ones who have caused an offense to an innocent individual, a person who has made peace with the people of God, or a person who is considered to be the people of God, because when you make peace with the people of God, you put yourself under, under the umbrella of the people of God. So in essence, the Gibeonites were adopted into being the people of God. So what I was saying was when you Make an offense towards those people. You need to repent. If when you uh, just repent, repent. Because you'll find yourself not being able to prosper. You'll find yourself not being able to grow and develop in business. You'll find yourself uh, in situations to where when you get one thing fixed, another thing happens. When you think... You've done good in this area, bad comes in another area. You're experiencing a modern day, modern day famine as a result of an offense. But those of you who are in the midst of a famine, know and understand that that famine may not be your fault. So seek God to find out what's going on so that you can begin to rectify the situation. Next week, we're going to speak about how David dealt with reconciling, reconciling, reconciling with the Gibeonites. We're going to see the response of King David and what he did to correct this situation because King David was a righteous man, you know. So him seeking God for instructions to find out what's going on, David then goes to the Gibeonites. All right? There's much to unpack here. Much to unpack. But for this week, know and understand that God protects the innocent, whether that's innocent children, innocent babies, uh, whether that's, you know, innocent individuals. God protects the innocent from those who have been killed as a result of police brutality, as I said earlier, who did not have weapons. 
to those who may have been unjustly fired from jobs, even to those who have not been afforded the opportunities for education. God defends the innocent. So be encouraged, my dear people. Be encouraged. God bless you. God keep you. Let's pray. Yeah, let's pray. Father, I thank you for being the defender of the innocent. God, I thank you, Lord God, that because we are the people of God, that you will always defend us. No matter if you have to bring in famine, no matter what you have to do, God, you always come and see about us. You are our, in our vindicator. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you, Lord God, for being our ultimate protector. And we give you praise for it. We ask, God, that you will forgive those who have offended us. Bring them into repentance. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. I hope y'all have a great week. Continue to read and meditate on this word. We're going to move forward. We're going to move further. We're going to move deeper because it's not your fault. God bless you.